So I have with me today Miller Kelly. Uh, she is a practicing artist currently working in Steamboat Springs, Colorado and Moab, Utah. She studied painting at the New York Studio School with Rosemary Beck and Mercedes Matters in the 90s and received an MFA in painting from Boston University, where she studied with John Walker. She is not represented by a gallery, but has sold work around the globe and also does commissions regularly. She is interested in how abstraction and visual language mimics and alters patterns of thought, culture, and nature. Miller, thank you for joining me today. Thanks. Um, so I'm, I'm curious and because like that last sentence really stuck out to me, you know, in your bio and, and, uh, this idea of how abstraction in visual language mimics or alters patterns of thought, culture and nature. I mean, those things in a way, they seem like all, all connected, you know, in some sense, but, but what exactly do you mean by that? Right. So. I I um been thinking about that myself in a way forever um and also it's it's sort of like a thought in the back of my head it's not something I've actually talked about a whole lot yeah. but um but I do think about it and I do think it's true and I think it has to do with you know when I'm really engaged in painting and um working and and, sh and shifting and changing and, and like loving that process, it, it always feels to me like a reflection of everything that is everything else that I'm experiencing in the world. And um, it ends up being like a way of like understanding things better, al almost like almost like a direct metaphor to um, everything that's going on around me. Mm -hmm. And then and then there's all these lessons that I find in it like um when you back off of that that like a painting just like reality is actually totally malleable mm -hmm. um and you can decide you can decide how it's gonna look and and you can change it and make sense of things and you can totally mess shit up <laughs> yeah. and yeah. um i just i just kind of love that i just find that um that dialogue kind of what what's the most gripping thing about painting for me so um and then and then in terms of thinking about it all abstractly i i don't know where i i heard this but but um the and i don't even know what it means honestly to think abstractly uh, i meant to i meant to like google that before this <laughs> but um that that's what separates us from other animals. And that's what allows us to, to like have self-awareness and um, complex thought is this ability to like take repetition and forms and, and um, things like little pieces that don't make sense apart and put them together to, to make new things. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and it's kind of like we were able to, um, we're able to take things uh, and and like sort of elements or, or like these these perceived realities within a, a given context, and we can remove those things from those contexts and either construct new ones um, or or simply place them in a new construct um, or new a new context that that allows us to to ascribe or see the thing with with like new meaning. Mm -hmm. right or or like an altered augmented meaning um and so then our relationship to those things can change yeah and, and i think if you don't have an awareness of that those ideas of abstraction and 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 even the metaphors of them like space space i mean you can make a, a painting without um, a readable space on a picture plane and it it um it kind of falls flat you know I mean <laughs> no pun intended um and and then and then it's interesting because visual language is a language that you have to speak to make to to speak it and to read it you know so then um 
there's all these this artwork in the art world that actually does not ascribe to that language and, and yet these are like great expensive pieces of artwork that that I this is another topic that I kind of am interested in um <clears throat> like how that art world and the painting world are different um and where they intersect and um how it is that this really incredibly what I consider bad and boring artworks can sell for millions of dollars. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, I guess that is just the difference to me. And, and I'm not saying there's no value in, in using other, other, these other more conceptual based languages. They're just different than, than kind of what we're touching on. And, um, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, the art world certainly is, is different than than like a painter's world um and I, and I would say that a painter's world is is incredibly personal right and and, and intimate and it, it's cultivated within that person um and and it's something that that grows and deepens and matures over time and over use um and the thing that is difficult I, uh, in my experience with the art world, and I don't have like a, a ton of experience with the art world, you know, um, but from what I've had and from what I've observed and, and heard others talk about is that the art world is How can I put this in a way that is the art world is something that reflects <laughs> okay <laughs> it's like it's baffling <laughs> I'm, I'm stumped here because I I want to say it in a way that is sincere but but I want to say and I want to say it in a way that's considered uh and, and consider it um, because the art world is not bad inherently. It's actually really good in, in terms of what it can do for, for patrons, for collectors um, and for culture and for artists. Um, but I think that it's the art world is easily corruptible. Um, and unfortunately the the current within the art world is created by and sustained by um, capitalism, which in of itself is not a bad thing, but there are aspects of capitalism that are detrimental to artists, um, like love of money, right? And that's not to say that poverty is is this like you know, like to be a good artist you have to be impoverished you know and and if if an artist is wealthy then then they have no merit because they're certainly they're certainly not creating work of any value. But like it's it's more of the sense that that it is for an artist to find their place within the art world. They are, it's like it's either kind of one or two things have to happen. And this is a very simplified, sort of reductive explanation, is that they either one, make something that is trendy, that's already appealing to a certain fashionable trend, uh, or, and, and within that vein, make something that is sort of just beyond that, that trend, sort of anticipating where it's going, in a sense, and being the leader in that, uh, which is its own type of innovation and business savvy, right? Reading the market and kind of getting a sense of where it's headed, stuff like that. But that's different than making something that is able to offer such profound value to the art world that it appeals to its inherent goodness. And it appeals to the virtue of its function, that it actually elevates the art world and all of the, all, and all of the associations with it. Yeah, I might make the distinction like 
like to me the first thing you described describes the art world and the second thing describes more like art history and the continuation of it you know like um which i think are a little different um and the first that's, description did that's, that, that's tricky it's tricky because art history is informed by the art world and culture and the way that we remember it and see it but over time there i'm sure there's artists that were commercially successful that didn't last in the history books and there are definitely hordes of artists that died unknown and poor that rose in art history you know yeah. so so I, I do think it's a, a little bit um different and in fact um I mean, there's a there's a lot of great artists that are that are rising in the art art world in the current contemporary art world, and um, will probably make it into history, and that's and that's great. Um, <clears throat> I think. I mean, I I see the whole art, and I never studied art history um, really ever, other than like through classes like yours and um, ra random books I'd read and some some in the New York studio school, but I'd never, I'm, I'm low on my art history other, and other than look, going to museums and absorbing as much as I can, but um, studying it, I, know, I didn't do that much, but I still feel like it's my, like the history of art is my very best friend in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and like, it's almost like a Buddhist, I don't know if you're familiar with like Buddhist tradition where they, they have like, a, it, they call it, um, transmission from from expert to expert, from uh, llama to llama or whatever, and literally transmit the knowledge um, so that it can be passed on and shared. And that's kind of how I feel about about um, art history, like that I I've been given this uh, gift uh, and of like knowledge and a language and a knowledge and um, a history and a, a place and like if I didn't have that like it would just be so like you, one would still be compelled to to be creative and everything but it just like without a context just would feel so weird and I, I guess I feel like um I don't think this actually is going anywhere <laughs> this part of this discussion but there's just there's so much in the art world that I just can't hook into and I and I, I feel like it goes back to that question and um you know there's a whole I am a painter and I care about painting so I'm sure there's a the whole like conceptual art world has its own history and I'm just not I just don't speak that language so and that's fine um yeah well I, I would say that like and that's the thing too is is that is that the the painter's the painter's world is so incredibly unique um, that the shape of that world and how it takes shape for the painter is not necessarily going to fit into the shape of the art world and its you know current state from moment to moment or from movement to movement, right? So, so that's that's something, but. You know what you were saying before about art history and how within that scope there are these these artists that though maybe perhaps in their day weren't really considered or taken seriously or misunderstood or something you know um or weren't connected with the right people you know in their time and so their work wasn't really discovered but um but there was something that that was inherently valuable and virtuous in the sense of what it could offer humanity in the work that it 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 does rise to the top in, in a sense it does become salient in its own right uh in, in history and and it makes it accessible for us today so there is this kind of transmission that occurs through the work itself Right? because obviously we don't have the artists any longer and and the critics are or the art historians are going to have their take on things but that can never replace what the work itself is able to transmit and so i 
as a painter, what we are able to do when we look at other paintings is access that through the work in ways that nobody else can. Because as a painter, up to, up to the level of what we know within our own work, our own process about painting, which me personally is very little, <laughs> but it is enough that allows me to access something that is incredibly valuable. Um, when I look at and engage, when I look at paintings and engage with, you know, with paintings of other painters. And that I think is really important, you know, because at the end of the day, obviously, you know, you and I, and there will be many others who don't make paintings for the art world, right? There are painters who do make paintings for the art world. Like, it's like, look, you know, uh, I'm a manufacturer and, and I don't mean to, this is not a criticism, but this is, this is a position. Mm -hmm. it, you know, this is like, this is a position that, that is taken, right? You know, I manufacture a product. I know who my end user is and I want to be successful with, with what I do. Um, right. And so then you've, you've got to be good at you know, administration, communication, marketing, building relationships, you know, cultivating, you know, all that kind of stuff, which are really important skills to have that a lot of painters don't have or haven't really fully developed because we are insular. And I mean, you know, a lot of us, and we, we spend time developing an attention. We, we spend time and attention developing those interior worlds. Right. And, and, and that's, that's just the way it is. I mean, so, you know, it, it, it may pay to have someone who can step into our world and perceive its inherent value and then take that into the art world, right? But it is very difficult, I feel like, for the artist to do, to be both. Yeah, I, I both. agree. And I think that's my, I, I, I mentioned earlier, like, I, I was feeling a little blue about this experience of hanging out with some art collectors last night and just realizing like the um they they were they they were they came into being collectors um because they fell in love moved into a house that had no furniture and nothing on the walls and their neighbor was a gallerist and and they discovered that they liked art and that they liked similar art and so that began this passion of collecting art with unfathomable amounts of money um, that has been guided by various um, people that advise them. And so um, it's, it's, a, it's a sweet story, right? I mean, who wouldn't love to do that? And um, what a nice way to connect with your partner in the world and all of that. However, like they end up with these kind of enormous, somewhat cookie cutter, pieces like side pieces of all of the people that are in, in in the top of the art world that you know they they buy everything or most things at the um miami basil and um um they they get excited about about uh, auctioning with famous people and winning <laughs> and um and and they say that a large part of their collection is in storage. And I, I don't know, like, it's, it's like, it's a kind of a, it's, it's a typical, it's the kind of the story you all, you often hear about collectors and, um, um, and it just, it just left me like this little piece of sadness because, um, it, it seemed to leave out the education of the language you know like um yeah sure yeah to put so much of that money into these things that were literally manufactured for the purpose almost of like hooking people like that yeah um, and making that money like that's a little bit of the the corrupted side I, I feel like and and um and you know I mean I could like I could teach them so much but it would be like socially wrong to suggest that to them and and uh you know i know like I, why wouldn't they not have a brian rico that would bring so much beauty into their daily lives you know 
Uh, and the reason is because it's not a commodity <clears throat> according to that world, you know, according to my world, like that, I would, I would kill to have that, you know, but anyways, wow. so I, I wonder, like, I, I love that description that you gave of the difference of people that go that route or not. And I, I guess, and I just kind of am curious, like, like I would, like if I had more time, I would like to like change that somehow, you know, like kind of gear it back to experience and not, not production and manufacturing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I look, I mean, I've, I've had friends, I, I know painters who just with incredible natural skill and talent, um, and command over the materials and technique, you know, that they've developed and worked into that they've made beautiful systems and they can make work that is so just, um, shocking, you know, and awe-inspiring, um, and man, and they can, they can do it. Um, they have found a way to really make it happen. It's like just sexy rock and roll, you know, and, um, and they're and they're fun they're really fun the paintings or the artworks the, the yeah the paintings you know um but it's kind of like you know there are there are um i think at the end of the day like like the kind of painting that that for me you know that i really love are are like the quiet ones you know the the paintings that move slow that don't mm -hmm. move fast you know that um paintings that are like very you know uh contemplative and and they invite you in um and you stay for a long time you know and it's it's a kind of thing where the painting grows in depth and it grows in revelation the more time you spend with it the more attention you give to it and and there's this sort of maturation that that occurs not so much in the painting but in me you know in, in interacting with it, um, which gets back to that initial statement you, that that you made and how abstraction and visual language can can alter patterns of thought, you know, um, and even how we interact with nature, you know, and 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 establish a relationship with nature, right? Um, because technology doesn't really offer a whole lot in that regard in the in of itself uh, through technology we can do a lot right but um but it in of itself doesn't fashion this sort of connection to nature if anything it, it removes us further from it because it is so other um you know but but i think that like when when beholding a work of art like it's you know for us painting but hike sculpture my like, gosh right um but there's something that that put, that that reminds us of nature and, and reminds us of like like where we come from in a sense and what we are a part of you know um, and and it reminds us really of our humanity uh, which I think is is very important because it is easy to become distracted especially in this in this day and age and forget about our humanity and kind of just focus on deadlines and yeah and also just that 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 lesson again of like being being able to to change you know like um like we think we've been handed this world and and it, and it and we have and it affects our brain in these one kind of ways of kind of being scattered and um distracted all the time and 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 thinking that we have to believe the news but in i mean that's the beautiful thing about a painting like and and it's such a good reminder that actually you can think about things however you want you can do things however you want like yeah. you, you know i mean and and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and you you know it's the, all these like lessons like endlessly con like constantly in that language that i love yeah yeah you know there's um <clears throat> uh there there's this there's this like real kind of like um 
cultivation of of like uh poetry and and image making you know and and it's for me it's it's a process of like stripping away so that what is left over and what i choose to use within that that sparse you know economy is is something that that is able to convey like a lot and you know i do i did the best i can with that and i by no means am, am a master at, at that at all I'm, I'm, and with that sort of like gets us into this other thing about professional and student you know but like but it's 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 sort of like i do it to the best that i can right which is what any of us can can hope to do and um and and i find that like that there are times when, when the work that it's it's very full there's a fullness to the work um and so when i when i talk about economy and sparseness i don't mean like little like avery like like milton avery visual visually represents that um and so does someone like morandi but like there is a fullness in Morandi's work. His work doesn't feel sparse to me at all. His work feels like it is filled to the brim with form. Like the space itself is this beautiful form, this considered form, this volume, this, this irregularly shaped volume that is behaving in ways that are um that are not that are not not that are not bound to any one particular type of behavior but there's like this there's this sort of duality to it you know this, this multiplicity to it that that is so engaging and um and that's that's what i hope to acquire like in my paintings but it it happens very slowly you know it's like having to like be with a poem for a long time and and really kind of enter into it and access it at like, like these these levels right to engage with it on these levels. you start off on the surface and you keep going deeper and deeper and deeper you know? yeah that's interesting um i i mean like i i would maybe say I, i'm just gonna call it this because that's what i'm thinking of but this sort of reductionist um intention uh there's that word <laughs> um of uh like kind of getting the most with the least that I personally like love in in artists and artworks. Um, not to say that they all are like that, but but I think it's another reflection of the world. There's too much shit going on, and like, how do you reduce that and just get to what is important in the in the simplest way that you can, and have it still like have have this life, and um. So I completely agree with all of that. And I, I love that you brought that up because I didn't, I, I wouldn't have ascribed that to you necessarily automatically, but now it makes perfect sense. And I, I think you can, um, I think there's value in the other approach where you over embellish and, and like, like I would say like Bonard or something, you know, where it's like a lot, even Cezanne to some degree, like, is every it's you could you could look at them from either angle i think but um yeah that's an interesting um description of the process for you yeah 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 you know um but it's not rock and roll I mean, it's, it's not you know it's it's <laughs> you know um yeah. But I, sometimes I just want to make rock and roll, you know. Um, Do you ever? Well, it's, like, it's, yeah. it's the you know what it is. It's the energy. It's like it's it's like the the immediate like access to to that velocity, that that thrust, that tension, that edginess, um, and just love of. Uh, of life, you know, vitality, um, just exploding and anger and violence, you know, and, you know, all those things. And yeah, like I, 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 my work doesn't take shape directly from that type of energy, but I do 
take that energy because I have that energy and I, I focus it and, and I, I really condense it so that I can kind of aim it at something and, 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 and sort of develop something material out of it. And it might be one small moment in the painting, you know? Um, and so that, that, that seems to help a lot because I, I used to just try to explode into it and like get it all out. And then it's like done, not the painting, but like the session, you know, um, but there's nothing, this, the vitality that I felt like was there in the process of making it doesn't stay in the painting. It like, it's there, it greets you, and then it's gone. Well, it's at least it, you know, it's probably at least gets credit for having the painting exist because <laughs> it's like fuel, you know? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's fuel that burns fast. Yeah, but it's also, I mean, painting is, I, I find it to be exhausting. Like it's, it's, it energizes me too, but it's hard work. And, and um, so you gotta, you gotta, I think you have to have some rock and roll fueling it, even if it, even if it gets buried in the process. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, you were, you were talking about, um, in some sense, you were asking, uh, like, sort of discuss the difference between what what you know someone who'd be considered a professional versus a student why yeah. why would that be important to you you know i think because i'm i'm um i mean there's some strange context i have a research job and i i work for something called the reshoring initiative and the um president i'm i'm the senior data analyst and the, the president is the founder and um, it's it, it it segues into um, everything in the news these days. Um, offshore manufacturing coming back because of as a result of the supply chain mess that has occurred because of COVID and problems with China and the Ukraine and oil and like everything that's happening. And and I've been working for him for ten years, and that's how long the business has existed. And he is like the number one expert in the world on this subject <laughs> and it's like so clear and it's so sweet and aw awesome because he was on this stuff passionately before anybody else was mm -hmm. and he and he works like 80 hours a week and he's 80 he's 78 years old and he and he loves it and and he is like he is accomplished like he is a professional <laughs> he's accomplished a professional mm -hmm. right um, and, and so I like, because it's my other side life, I'm like, well, you know, I'm 50 years old now and which is insane to say that. Um, but anyways, uh, I've been painting since in my early twenties and I still even, I, I go in phases, but I very much feel like a student and, and, and I, and I just, and I love that aspect of it, but I also think, wait a minute, like maybe you could approach that with a little bit more confidence like you actually have some um experience and, and knowledge even though like um like i don't think you can ever make that comparison like how can i be like i could be the expert of being being miller the painter <laughs> you know but not necessarily of being like a, a, a painter like um i don't know if that makes any sense but yeah no that, that 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 does make sense. I mean, but it, it also, I'm sorry, it just also ties into a, an issue I have of never knowing when to stop a painting or how to finish it. So, you know, I think if I got if I if I got a little bit more um, intentional about that, I might might generate some more. But I would never want to shut it down. That nature of I don't I don't ever want to pretend like I know what I'm doing because then I would not make the dis this, the discoveries. You know, I think the yeah. problem is boredom. That that's that's the big problem is boredom. Um, so, um, unless there's something that is being pursued that is is profound enough and uh, 
and deep enough for you know for the painter that when they reach when they reach a point where their systems have become like very established and, and how they develop the work and they they have a sense of who they are and and, and what their work is about um and they pursue that with an amazing amount of um, ambition and um, and I would say like like what they ask of themselves and what what they require from the work uh, would be more than anybody else would even consider thinking can consider thinking about and and so the requirements are are higher than than are the standards are higher than anybody else's and the, the requirements are more severe than anybody else's that to me is um that that to me is uh is a student who is practicing professionally now uh, one wouldn't have to necessarily have a fixed or an established system and probably actually it's better if it's not established or, or fixed because I think that would in some way lead to boredom because it'd be too much repetition in, in, you know in a sense but, yeah. but, then, but I, 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 I think you have to find a balance you know I, I I mean for me I think I'm still struggling with finding that balance because there is like ambition is not a bad thing it's it does it does push you it, it's a good thing to push yourself on whatever level you're on you know and, and um but maybe not get stuck like if you achieve something you, you know you know yeah and then that that uh, i that that thing i keep alluding to that we haven't actually talked about in the recording but of f figuring of, of having a, a clear intention that mm. can't be um you we earlier discussed how that is almost essential and um maybe we talk about that another day but <laughs> no i mean like it's it's true i mean um yeah no i mean so a couple things one ambition is is vital it, it's vital um because that's part of the that's part of what makes the what gives the work vitality is the ambition is that's part of it um, there are other things that feed into that, of course, but ambition is one of them. Um, and like, one would hope that we never cease being students, right? Yeah. Because, you know, there's, there's just way too much to, to learn. And it seems like the more you learn, the less you know, and, and, and it certainly is, a, is applicable to painting, uh, by every single measure and standard that could be used uh, for it. But yeah, I mean, the, the process of making the work. So you have the practice, you have um, the ambition, you have the, the high level of you know, high standards. Um, you have brutal requirements of the work, severe requirements. Uh, not not unfair, but they're just more severe than, than anybody else would be willing to, to ask ask of the work, which means that you make room for destruction. It means that you have to be willing to make room for destruction. Um, and it also means that you have to make room for chaos because that's what, that's really in a sense how things grow is you bring order into something and it becomes something that can function, but the functionality of that system will reach a point where it it will need to expand and become something more inherently than what it what it is and that requires destruction and chaos because you have to disrupt the order um, but you must be willing to bring order back into what has been destroyed and disrupted but that order will be different 
the patterning of that order and in the understanding of that order, the structuring of that order will be different than than the previous system. One, so so when we talk about intention, uh, in order to like really kind of make this process, you know, for it to be feasible, for it to be viable, the artist, as opposed to being destructive to the artist in an unhealthy, like in an unhealthy way, it's very important for I think the painter to to have um, a a level of awareness of what their desires are. And what are your desires um, for the work, for painting? What are your desires in general? Um, because that, that helps to inform your sensibilities. Um, that helps guide and direct them. Uh, and and helps to kind of, um, it, it sort of helps to define in a sense to like their function and, and how they're and how they're they're, they're utilized um, when you're when you're searching and striving because there are many times in the work that you know uh, there's there's this uh, very intense sense of unrest and so you move you're compelled to move you can't stay in the spot you're in right so you move without a very clear direction as to where you're going you just know that you can't continue to hold on to what you've been holding on to, right? Right. To make so room, you, to make room yeah. for it. Yeah. You know? Yep. I. I. That makes perfect sense. And um. But um. It's an interesting thought to to define what your desires are like in in life or in painting to. I, I don't think I've done that exactly in the, well, in, in such a literal way. And I, I love, I'm going to try this time. I'm really going to do it. Yeah, and, and it's, it's also, but it's also your values. Yes, but, that's true. Yeah. Because there are times when, you're, when your desires will be in line with your values. And then there will be times when your desires are contrary to your values or vice versa. Your values are in contrary to your desires or contrary to it. And so that is something that needs to be explored and really considered because you're getting to you're you're accessing a deeper level of awareness of you know as to who you are and because really like like when we paint we're expressing that you know and that's course, all the way back to the beginning of this conversation right like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. so, and of course, like you know, there are external influences, right? That that's unavoidable, it's inescapable, and we wouldn't want to avoid or escape those things anyway, because mm -hmm. those still are informative. Because the things that appeal to us, the things we carry with us, do help to reveal, in a sense, who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, by by what affects us in in a, in a, in a certain way. Um, so understanding like your values and your desires and how they inform one another. And when you're talking about values, you're talking about there, there is sort of a, a, a progressive hierarchy that is established within those values because everything can't be of the same value because then you wouldn't be able to make any decisions about anything. Right. So it's like, like, you, you, there's like, there, there are, there's, so there are, there are ways that we sort of structure our values according to like what is most urgent or most important or what serves us or whatever the, um, whatever the motivation is behind it. Right. Um, but it's also, it's also our desires. So our values and our desires and through our sensibilities as, as painters and our understanding or appreciation of beauty and aesthetics and all this stuff, like, it begins to help us to, to identify a direction or a series of directions or, or you know, a potential, a potential directions. Like I could pursue this or I could pursue this. Well, maybe, maybe they have something to do with one another. Maybe they're not opposed to each other, right? So it's like this sort of line of, of thinking and, you know, in, in consideration. And, and once you sort of, 
have a sense of a, once you sort of have like a sense of a particular direction that, that you can move in, then the, that movement in of itself brings the certain like, different levels of revelation, right? Because you find you find things when you move, right? Um, and and that's that's sort of how you know that's that's that kind of that's the progression that's that's how the systems are are sort of formed and like that's how we begin to make decisions on how we bring order into something or what order even means you know um in a particular in a given situation or or in a given process you know so it, it's it, it helps to to kind of identify that and and the and it helps to identify what your intentions are. Um, and, and that's not to say that they have to be fixed, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's something that you can come back to. It's like a touchstone because your intentions will change. They'll evolve. All of these things will evolve and change, right? Because it's a constant evolution in a way. But like it gives you a place to come back to because we always, we always come back. As we, as you know, it's, it's we we move ahead, we come back, and, yeah. right? Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Hegelian dialectic, which I've always loved as a, um, um, where it's like a, a historical, historical and personal like spiraling upward, where you repeat yourself and and the way that you um, move upward, which would maybe in this context just be like a greater self awareness or something. But is all is driven by um, conflict and resolution, which is of course what we confront all the time in every moment of painting. So, yeah. and, then, and then having having that, like adding that element of being like, and I'm trying to get to this, I, and this is what's important to me. Like, so when you're in that, it, it just would help like move you forward. I like it. Yeah, and and it's important to have community of other painters because look you know these things that occur in isolation it, it would be all too easy to slip into delusion it just would be like you know <laughs> we need people who who know us and who know our work and care enough to like you know and, and know enough about painting just in general to, to and care enough to really talk to us about the work and about what's going on and and be able to like call a spade a spade and be like, look, man, you know, you're, you're really off in this, you know, and, and just to have someone to kind of like, that, to have someone that, that you can enter into dialogue with. You know? Yeah. Yep. It's, that's an interesting thought because um, it, we all go off. So mm -hmm. it's, and I wonder even like, um, is off, it, I agree that it's good to have somebody checking in on that and like, but I also, I also think that's slippery, like territory too, you know, like, um, I, I mostly, I agree, but <laughs> I don't know. What does that, I'm not sure how that plays out in reality, but. Um, yeah. Well, it's like, it's like, I've, I've had it, I've had it. Both, well, I've had it like three ways. One is is I've had uh, I've had someone talk to me uh, about the work and really see the work and see the direction that I was taking it and call it and call BS. Yeah, you told us that story. I remember that one. And I, yeah. they were right. Yeah. And and um because I was approaching something superficially. Yes. Even though I, I wanted it, I wanted it to be more than that, but it wasn't. And that's part of like the, the delusional aspect to it. Right? right. There was another time when I was doing something in the work and, and what I was doing was in a very early phase. It was in a very early phase. Uh, it was a part of this process that I was doing with the surface how I would arrive at surface, <clears throat> a very particular type of, of expression, surface expression. 
And they were like, oh, I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think that's, that's working. I don't think that's a good idea. And they were right. It wasn't working, but it, it wasn't like I would just pitch the whole thing. It just meant that I had further to go. It meant that I wasn't there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because sometimes it's hard to know, right? Because again, it's like, we're, we're reaching for something that we really don't, we don't know what it really looks like. Sometimes it's just like a feeling we're like, okay, look, I, 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 I kind of, I'm reaching for something that like a, like a, like, like a feeling like, or like, like a tone or something that I, I don't, I don't know what that looks like you now, but I, I, I feel like I'll, I'll recognize it when I'm there, that kind of thing, you know? Um, but there's a, there's, because there's like a deep recognition. It's like, oh yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for. That That's what I'm looking for. But I, because they said that what I was doing didn't work, that actually made me want to do it all the more. And so I did. And because of that, I was able to arrive at something that if I had not had that dialogue, I don't think I would have gotten there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. yeah and, and so both of those things are incredibly valuable. The third, the third was when someone had no idea what they were talking about, you know, and thought they did, but and you're like, you're wrong. <laughs> well, well, no, but you know, it, it was like, it was like this, it was like, it helped me to see my work in a different way, mm -hmm. right? In a way that I, I wouldn't have normally approached it. And because of that, it, it kind of gave me something to be aware of. Mm -hmm. That was important. So all three instances were really important. It's, it's like, it's, it's just, you gotta have in some sense, like, and this really comes down to what we were talking about before with like thinking through thinking through, you know, these things, what are my values, desires, what are my intentions, what are, are what directions am I heading? What, what direction does the work want to, what direction is the work going? You know, can I help it get there? You know, and, and it's like within that process, it, it really takes discernment um, to navigate, to navigate through that process. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but that, that that's why it's good to have a community because yeah, it's really hard you know, to have discernment alone. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, what else? All right. Well, let's see here. Uh. There's one more thing. There's one more thing. Uh, it's, it's this, this idea of, of committing to a final product. Yeah. That, that's something that you had, had mentioned. Um, like exploring versus committing to a final product actually is what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so what did you mean by that? Um... It's so tied into everything that we've touched on, I think. But um, you know, it just it has always kind of baffled me where to end a painting. Hmm. Not just where to actually, but more specific than that, like how, 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 <laughs> you know, like like how to have that it's another it's another kind of intentionality like how to be like okay i'm stopping here and i and i own this and conversely this is really not done and i'm going to keep working on it until it is and 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 um like i just haven't i'm weak on that area like i i haven't figured out how to throw my fist down and own it <laughs> at, at the end, you know? So um, it's just one of my struggles that I want. Yeah. Well, hey, look, I mean, uh, I struggle with the same exact thing. I, I don't know how to finish a painting. I don't even know if, they fin if a painting can be finished, you know? I mean, 
Well, oh. maybe, maybe you shouldn't think about it as a finish because it isn't. It's all a process and it's all a continuum. Like every, like, yeah, so. so that That's an interesting idea, right? So if we don't think about a painting being finished, then what are we thinking about? Well, go ahead and answer that. I don't, I'm just, I'm, I don't know. Like, what are we thinking about? Because yeah. like, like that's, that's kind of like, uh, that's what I mean. It's like, what, what, and I think that could be different for every painter, honestly. You know, I think that, you know, that's part of, that's part of knowing your work, you know, and knowing who you are as a painter um, and what it is that you, what it is that you're demanding, what you are requiring from the work. Yeah. Because there's, there's, there's something, there's a way that you need the work to function. Like there's something that the work needs to give to you as a painter. Um, and as the painter, you have to give something to that painting. And that's really what's going on, you know? Um, but I think that how a painter gets there is, 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 it's especially relative to their process and to the temperaments as a painter, you know, and as a person. Um, <clears throat> I remember reading this quote uh, by Antonio Lopez Garcia. He, he painted for the most part, you know, exclusively from life. He would develop a painting that would take a decade, you know, a decade or so and just work on it from life and then, but there are, there are also other paintings he would do like in the studio, um, from like photo references and things like that. But it seemed to me that what he said was true, was really true for him. And he said that he, he, he knew that he could step away from the painting when a magnitude in his painting was equal equal to the magnitude of what was before him. Um, I don't know if he felt like he really ever truly achieved that. What do you mean the, the magnitude of what was before him? Like inside like, of, of nature. Oh, okay. Of what was like before him, like what he was experiencing, like the magnitude of, of that experience, <clears throat> the intensity of it and, and, um, and, and all of its, and all of its ferocity, like like because there is a ferociousness about it. it there is a, like a, a because it rushes, it rushes at you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's going on all around you, it just swallows you up. But but I don't think I don't think he I don't think he would say he ever got it. I, I think he would say that he there were times when he got close. Yeah, you know. But it's like all we can do is take it as far as we can. While yeah. while you while kind of like striving for that ultimate goal, right? I like that. I like that um, story of him, and I also would say uh, as it as an anecdote, um, I asked the painter John De Bro this question recently, and he had a really funny answer, <laughs> which was, and he works on his paintings for years. He said, "When there's nothing that's still bugging you about it." But does it ever happen? But maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think you're right, it's just different from every, it's different for every. And I think asking that question, what do you want from it? Again, maybe thinking about it in a little, a little bit more clearly, in a, in a little more intentional way might be helpful too, for me or other people or whatever. Yeah, and, and that, that isn't that doesn't imply leaving out intuition. Mm -hmm. Like because we can't do that, right? We know that we need our intuition. So it's like it's it's um like the, it's 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 learning how to make it work together. You know, um intuition and awareness, like they really can work together, you know. Um, because there are things that you'll be conscious of that, that help to direct a lot of the activity and it will help to, 
because there is a discerning of the subconscious. There's a discerning that goes on there. It's not just like, it doesn't, it doesn't just all spill out without any type of order. Like there's order to the subconscious. Like, uh, and the subconscious is informed. So having awareness and like intention and all these things, like these decisions that we make, they inform the subconscious and the subconscious informs them. And so there really is a partnership there and they can work together. Just learning how to do that. You know, and, and it's not like you learn it and you're like, oh, I got it now. Good, good to go. It's like, no, like, that you don't ever really learn how to do it, but you just learn how to do it better. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so I, I think for me, like, like getting to a place in the painting where, where I feel like everything is considered. Um, and like considered in, in how it contributes to the narrative of the painting. And by this point, the narrative of the painting has sort of begun to reveal itself, even though I don't, I don't fully understand the narrative, but I, I do in part. And it's enough to help me to, to govern and, and to make these decisions to where I can look at the painting and say, okay, that's, that's all I can, that's all I, that's all I can do. It's all I know, it's all I know how to do at this point. So I have to, I have to let it be, you know, there are many times I'll come back a year, two, two years later, and even sometimes five that I'll see, oh, I'll see something. I'm like, that's, that's where it needs to go. And I'll, I'll get into it. Um, but, but no, I mean, there, there are times when I can only take it as far as I can, as I, as it can go, as I know how to take it. And then that's it. Yeah, I guess just uh, keep on working. Sure. I mean, yeah, what else? What else can we do? Right. I mean, but but that's that's part of the like the agony, but also also the the joy, like the splendor, because it there's no room for boredom, really, um, if you don't ever reach the end you know what i mean like it's it's a it's a constant striving it's a constant battle you know you get tired you get tired and fatigued but i'm bored yeah cool well um that was fun yeah that was good yeah i mean miller thank you so much I, I, it was a really cool talk i really enjoyed it I hope you did too. And um, uh, I hope that uh, that we can at some point like pick up the dialogue and run with it some more. You know? sure. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. I can't well, wait to see so the other discussions too. Are yeah. you going uh, to get into the studio? Or you're in the studio. Are you going to paint today? I think I will. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. I've got some stuff I can, I can, I can mess up. <laughs> I'll, uh, maybe I'll send you a before and after picture and see what, what this conversation did to my office. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be great. I'll check it yeah. out. Cool. All right, we'll talk to you soon. All right, take care, Miller. Okay, see ya. Bye.